Hey, Bill, what day is it? Hey, gang. Welcome back to Hey, Bill, What Day Is It? I'm always on the lookout for unusual national days to celebrate, and I think I've found a great one. There's a lot of potential for education and humor in this week's celebration. The last Saturday in April has been designated National Old Faction Day. Not Old Faction Day, Old Faction Day. So what's that? Well, it's commonly known as National Sense of Smell Day. It celebrates one of our five senses. Our sense of smell is more than a way to know when dinner's ready. It also plays a role as an early warning system. It triggers memories and interacts with our other senses. This year it falls on April 24th. Humans generally have a poor sense of smell. Dogs have noses that are up to a hundred million times more sensitive than ours. However, we can smell thousands of different things whereas we can only separate taste into five different tastes. Most of us have normal sense of smell, but some people have problems smelling. People who suffer from anosmia can't smell at all. I wish I had that malady when I was shoveling out the barn when I was young. People who have hyperosmia are very, very sensitive to smells. I think my mom had that one. An unusual disorder is dysosmia. Things smell differently than they should. Perhaps chocolate smells like gasoline and roses smell like the sea. What's the difference between aroma and smell? While odor can refer to pleasant and unpleasant odors, the terms scent, aroma, and fragrance are usually reserved for pleasant smelling odors and are frequently used in the food and cosmetic industry to describe floral scents or to refer to perfumes. While the term odor is generally used to describe an unpleasant olfactory experience. Colors have now been scientifically proven to have the same links to certain smells on a global level, which means there's something happening on a neurological level. Researchers studied 20 people in each of six different cultural groups, which included Dutch, Netherlands residing Chinese, German, Malay, Malaysian Chinese, and American. Researchers gave each person 14 odor pens with a color palette containing 36 different unnamed colors. They asked the participants to sniff the pens and rate which colors were the least and most likely to pair together. No matter the culture the participant was from, they made similar associations with regard to the relationship between smell and color which proves it's not a culturally influenced phenomenon. What colors have you smelled today? Do you know scent cells renew every 30 to 60 days and are the only sense nerve cells that can regenerate? In other words, you can't wear out your sense of smell. These scent cells allow us to recognize smells from childhood, triggering memories of Play-Doh, Grandma's cookies, or pipe smoke. It's also the only sense directly connected to the brain where all those memories are stored. For instance, when house shopping, a woman is more likely to smell unwelcome odors such as smoke, pet urine, and mold before a man. Women naturally have a better sense of smell. I've always said women smell better than men. A human's odor is like a freight fingerprint. When we wear deodorant or fragrances, our scent combines with those for a unique combination. Babies recognize the smell of their mothers. Spouses know the scent of their partners, too. Museums, children's museums, and science centers across the country participate in celebrating this holiday by offering hands-on activities and informational displays about the sense of smell. For fun, do a smell test at home. Collect items such as the ones listed below, place a small amount of each item in an individual containers, cover them with cloth, and take turns blindfolding family members to see if they can pass the smell test. Try things like lemon peel, vanilla extract, coffee grounds, toothpaste, chocolate, oil, sawdust, flower petals, or soap. It can be a lot of fun to test your kids on this. The molecules that activate the sense of smell, or olfaction, are airborne 
and they enter the body through the nose and mouth and attach to the receptor cells that line the mucous membranes far back in the nose. It then goes to that part of the brain that processes information about the smell to other areas closely related to it, collectively known as the limbic system, which scientists say plays a major role in controlling mood, memory, behavior, and emotion. Knowing this helps, to un helps us to understand why smell plays such an important role in memory, mood, and emotion. In fact, the sense of smell is more closely linked with memory than any of our other senses. The scent of an orchid in blossom, conjuring up recollections of a childhood picnic that you had long forgotten. Many times, certain aromas can trigger memories even from childhood. On Sundays, for instance, my mom would usually put a pot roast in the oven before we left for church, and when we got home, the heavenly aroma would fill the house. To this day, whenever my wife cooks a pot roast, I usually declare, it smells like Sunday in here. Most people love the smell of a big bouquet of flowers, but for me, not so much. My parents were quite talented vocalists, and so were often asked to sing at funerals. That meant that my two younger brothers and I had to spend hours in the lounge of a funeral home. So for me, the smell of flowers always means somebody died. In addition to being the scent's most highly emotive, the perfume in industry is built around this connection, with perfumers developing fragrances that seek to convey a vast array of emotions and feelings, from desire to power, vitality to relaxation. Some smells can even make you hungry. At one time, the city of Sykeston, Missouri, had a cottonseed mill that made the whole town smell like fried chicken. If I lived there, I would weigh a ton. On a more personal level, smell is extremely important when it comes to attraction between two people. Research has shown that our body odor, produced by the genes which make up our immune system, can help us subconsciously choose our partners. Kissing is thought by some scientists to have been developed from sniffing, that first kiss being essentially a primal behavior during which we smell and taste our partner to decide if they are a match. Today, such an activity must be used very selectively and very seldom, lest we get ourselves in big trouble. It's likely that much of our emotional response to smell is governed by association, something which is borne out by the fact that different people can have different, different perceptions of the same smell. For example, it might be a good cigar. Although I don't smoke, I like the smell because it reminds me of my grandfather, who did. He was a great guy. My wife, however, is allergic to smoke and hates the smell. Also, who doesn't love the smell of fresh pizza? To one person, they and their dogs start drooling when they smell it, while another person only thinks of the bathroom scale in the morning. Here in Texas, a field of blue bonnets emits an intoxicating scent that shouts, Howdy! Or take perfume. It's a whole industry providing a variety of scents. One person may find a particular brand powerful, aromatic, and heady, while another describing it as overpowering, sickly, and nauseating. When I was dating my wife, she took a liking to the cologne that I wore. I've always been thankful for that fragrance because it helped me catch her. Over the years, I've grown a little tired of that smell and indicated I would like to have something else. But that old one is the only one she'll buy me. Oh well, it's continued to attract her for 55 years now, so I guess I won't mess with a winner. Despite this, however, there are certain smells that all humans find repugnant, largely because they warn us of danger. The smell of smoke, for instance. My wife said I should develop a recognition of that smell when I cook, because she says that the smoke alarm isn't a cooking timer. Many of us who spend a lot of time working on cars have developed a recognition of odors that can be a warning while operating a vehicle. Gasoline, brake fluid, coolant, they're all good smells to be able to recognize because their presence can indicate a malfunction that can negatively affect a car's operation. One of the most unusual science projects I've ever heard of was a friend who wanted to demonstrate the speed of smell. 
In other words, how quickly do odor molecules disperse from a source without the movement of air? He spent a long time on that one. The Bible describes the burning sacrifices and incense as a pleasing aroma to God. Thus, our worship is an aroma that God treasures. These days, we don't burn things as a sacrifice in our worship. In the 21st century, we lift up songs of praise to our Heavenly Father. When you worship, remember that the music is not for your entertainment. Rather, it's your spiritual offering to Him. The worship leader is not up there to perform for you. He's there to lead you in your sacrifice of praise lifted up to the Heavenly Father. I'm Bill Wasor, and this is Hey Bill, What Day Is It? Now maybe you will recognize just how important your sense of smell really is. Get out there and enjoy the smell of this wonderful day that the Lord has made for you and have a triumphant day.